Sorrentino's pizza owner, Patrick Quinn, says he's tired of watching his energy bill go up each month. 2011, 2012, say May or June, the bill was running around $1,390, $1,400. So this past year, 2014, like last summer, it was running $2,230, $2,250. Quinn says he tried to cut his energy consumption by closing his restaurant between 3 and 4 p.m. each day. He turned off his ovens. He even shut down the pilot lights. The result? He says his power bill actually increased by a dollar. Resignation has now set in. What are you going to do? You know, we're slaves to the utility industry. To bolster his argument, Quinn points to the steam generators at San Onofre in 2012 that broke down just one year after they were installed and the subsequent $4.7 billion settlement that requires customers to pay for most of the plant's closure costs. He calls that settlement illegitimate because the California Public Utilities Commission allowed it without a full investigation of who was responsible for the plant's failure and who should be held accountable. There should be an investigation. Who designed the, the steam generators? What company designed those and the installation and why did they fail? You know, those are simple questions that should be asked. I, I'm, not, I'm not here to answer your questions. Former PUC President Michael Peavy was still a powerful bureaucrat unaccustomed to being challenged during this hearing last May. But former San Diego City Attorney Mike Aguirre wanted to know just how did the PUC reach the $4.7 billion settlement with little public input. So Aguirre asked Peavy how many times he had talked privately with executives from San Onofre's majority owner, Southern California Edison. Peavy, a former Edison executive himself, wasn't having it. I'm not here to answer your goddamn questions. Now shut up. Hindsight has brought clarity on Peavy's outburst for Aguirre. He really blew up, and of course now we know why. Just one year earlier, Peavy met with an Edison executive at the opulent Hotel Bristol in Warsaw, Poland. They discussed a framework for the settlement agreement on San Onofre. The launch of those talks effectively put an end to an investigation promised by the PUC into who was responsible for San Onofre's closure and whether customers should still foot the bill for a plant no longer generating electricity. That Poland meeting also came to light nearly two years later, after state investigators found notes about San Onofre's defective replacement steam generators on Hotel Bristol stationery during a search of PV's home in January. PUC officials and utility executives are the target of both federal and state probes for alleged inappropriate contact and possible influence peddling. What's more, Edison never reported the secret meeting to the PUC as required until after UT San Diego published a story about the seized notes. The company explained the 23-month delay by characterizing the Poland talks as an update on San Onofre that was, quote, permissible and not reportable. But the company goes on to say it now appears the executive may have crossed into substantive communication. Aguirre believes there's another reason for for Edison's belated notice. But once they were caught, they released it. All told, PUC officials had scores of private meetings and other contact with the executives at Edison and minority owners San Diego Gas and Electric about San Onofre since the Poland talks. There were also email exchanges. Commissioner Mike Florio discussed the root cause of the tube leak at San Onofre and refers to his, quote, regular Wednesday call with an Edison manager in an email. A PUC spokeswoman says those calls with Edison dealt with the immediate aftermath of the San Onofre outage and concerns about reliability if the plant couldn't come back online. But Aguirre says the private contacts between regulators and Edison went beyond engaging with industry to be responsible leaders. It became more about cutting a deal. This was carried on massively behind closed doors, with the public having no input Whatsoever. Edison declined a recorded interview, but in a court filing, Edison echoes the PUC's contention that the company and state regulators had to maintain contact after a large nuclear plant goes out of service for updates and to ensure reliable power supplies. Aguirre calls that explanation a cover to hide the clandestine maneuvering to settle a case 
that demanded a probe by the PUC. It wasn't a settlement. It was a plan to end the investigation. Aguirre says there was plenty to investigate. Records show Edison knew there were concerns about design flaws with the new steam generators before deploying them. A radiation leak in one of those generators in 2012 ultimately forced the plants shut down. Nuclear safety experts say Edison also failed to go through the proper licensing process with federal regulators to install the new equipment. And Edison never got permission from the PUC to put the new $700 million equipment into customer rates permanently, according to documents. Taken together, Aguirre says the facts scream for accountability. This is one of the biggest white-collar crimes ever. Meanwhile, there are calls by state lawmakers to throw out the San Onofre settlement and to right. force Edison to turn uh, over emails know, related to the deal. New PUC President Michael Picker has mail. pledged reform, but there is no word yet on whether the regulator will compel the company to release the emails. Uh, sure. Amitha Sharma, KPBS News. So, for example,